Oh, do hurry up. Hello. You're up bright and early. What are you up to? Waiting for the milkman. I hope you'll both be very happy. <laughs> well, he won't be if he's this late again. See you. Hello. Good morning. We haven't really introduced ourselves, have we? I'm Rhonda. How do you do? I'm Mrs. Trenchard. I think we've spotted each other from time to time, haven't we? Now that you mention it, you do look vaguely familiar. That's probably because I'm going out with Sam. I'd love to chat, but I'm in the middle of breakfast. I'm not treading on any toes, am I? Toes? Look, there's you, there's me, and there's Sam. I mean, do I have to spell it out? Are you implying some sort of Chiswick triangle? Is it or isn't it? I'm hoping to get a lot closer to Sam, but I need to know, well, where he's been. <laughs> where he's been? Sam tells me it's all very innocent, but I want to hear it from you. Are you and Sam at it or not? <laughs> I'm sorry that you find it necessary to abuse me in this way. All I want is a straight answer. What do you two really get up to in there? Oh, Sam and I get up to all sorts of things. All sorts of things. Most of them defy description. And none of them are any of your business. Well, of course it's my business. I'm going out with the man. And I need to know that you and him are strictly platonic. Well? So nice to have met you. Morning, Duff. Good morning, Sam. Good morning, Sam. Good morning, Sam. But the real bonus is that smile. Your coffee, your marmalade, your butter, your toast, and the sports page of my Daily Telegraph. Daphne, what can I say? You've done everything but peel me a grape. <laughs> well, well. You've had the last of the milk in your coffee, which means that my tea and muesli will have to wait, but I really don't mind a bit. Well, I don't know. What we've lunched yesterday, now all this, this is the longest stretch of goodwill I've ever had from you. Is it? Yes, and I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's a hell of an improvement. Oh, you're very kind. Oh, let's smile again. See, I knew it could be like this. I just can't believe it's all taken so long. Yes, well, things are different now, aren't they? You're not kidding. I finally feel safe. Safe? Safe. Safe from what? Safe from you, of course. Me? Well, don't tell me you've forgotten you now have a steady girlfriend. Oh, you mean Rhonda? Of course I mean Rhonda. Yeah, Rhonda. You don't sound very enthusiastic. Well, of course I'm enthusiastic. I mean, me and Rhonda, we're like, well, we're like, um, well, we're like Rhonda and me. Oh. <laughs> it sounds perfectly idyllic. She's knitting me a mauve sweater. Mauve. <laughs> How idyllic can you get? Do I detect a note of regret? Oh, Daphne, is Rhonda the price I've got to pay for you to treat me humanely? I wouldn't put it quite like that. Oh, you said you feel safe. Yes, and it's a wonderful feeling. Is that all you see me as? I'm sorry? Look, I've got a soul, Daphne. I've got a brain. And I'm hurt, I'm deeply hurt that after all these months, you can just see me as nothing more than a sex object. <laughs> I don't think in all my life I have ever had my words so twisted. Well, it's true. And I think it's sad that a man who cares for you wants you to be happy and all you can see is drool. Have you the remotest idea what you put me through before Rhonda mercifully diverted your baser thoughts? Tell me. 
Hardly a day passed without you assaulting me with innuendo. Innuendo? I spent months trapped in this basement, running a daily gauntlet of suggestive remarks and even more suggestive suggestions. Well, I'm <laughs> sorry if the odd remark offended you. Yes, well, please never forget. I have an extremely low smut threshold. <laughs> Just my way of testing the water from time to time. Testing the water? Yeah, seeing if it'll ever warm up. <laughs> and once or twice it did. Once or twice I saw a glimpse of the real Daphne, the Daphne that spent a whole lifetime trying to struggle free. You're not eating your toast. I'm to you, Daphne. I know. God knows why, but I am. I'm sorry? Despite your many faults, I beg your pardon? I <laughs> said, despite your many faults. Well, if that isn't the pot calling the kettle black, I don't know what is. My many faults? What about your many faults? But like what? Like what? Like what? How can you say that with a straight face? Well, what are my faults? Go on, Daphne, what are they? Well, it's hard to know where to begin. Try. Well, let's just say you have some extremely rough edges. Well, that's part of my charm, isn't it? Charm, he says charm. Ah, but let us not forget, you've got some rough edges yourself, haven't you? And I think you're playing games with me. Games? Emotional games. Uh, I don't understand. Yes, you do. But be warned. Playing emotional games is a very high-risk sport. Very high risk. Before you know it, you can be a loser. Just a moment, where are you going? I'm taking baby Joe down the park. Do you know, our grandson's not even a year old yet but he's already making a lot more sense than you. Is this all the thanks I get for working my fingers to the bone, getting your breakfast? Looks like it. Now, just you listen to me. You listen to me, Daff. I've got my pride. I can't hang around forever. So stop playing games. I will not be your plaything. Hello, Rhonda. I met Daphne earlier. Oh, yeah? We didn't get on. No, she takes a bit of getting to know. She looked down her nose at me like I was a nasty smell. Sorry to hear that. And if she does it again, I'll squirt air freshener right up her nostrils. <laughs> <laughs> I can live with that thing for one more second is beyond me. Yeah, beyond me too sometimes. All right. All right. Where are you off to? I'll take you, Joe, down the park. He's very lucky to have a granddad like you. Thank you. Very nice of you. It's not hard being nice to you, Sam. You're a nice man. Well, it's nice to meet a woman who appreciates it. Come here. 